Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Pigskin Pick'em Rundown 2018, Week 13. We're getting ready to go into Week 14, I believe. We've only got four more weeks of football left, but uh, hey, that's the regular season. This thing keeps going through the playoffs. I'll talk about that here in a few. But uh, joining me tonight, returning guest, Evan Bevins. How you doing? Doing all right. How are you? Not bad at all. Buddy, I'm ready to talk a little bit of football. And like, like I just posted on our uh, Facebook page there, the we're going light on the news, but uh, we're going heavy on the on the uh, lighthearted stuff tonight. So, Sounds uh, good to me. Yeah, you, you've got yourself a topic you came up with a couple weeks ago. I threw one together. We'll just put okay. it that way in the last second so I can kind of feel like I'm con- contributing in some way. Uh, there was like, you know, I looked at some of the top news stories and something I don't think we even touched on last week. I don't even know if it happened by the time we recorded the podcast or not was the Kareem Hunt situation. Oh and, yeah. And then I was like, you know what? I'm, I don't even want to do that tonight. Cause that just, it, it's almost like a downer and it, it's a whole situation where Kareem Hunt got suspended and there's more stuff coming his way from what I understand. Uh, because, uh, they apparently, I think it was just either today or yesterday. They had said there was another incident that he was known one or two more instances. As a matter of fact, that uh, are very similar to what resulted in the suspension. So I said, Oh my gosh, I'm not looking into that. I don't even Watch, I don't even want to watch the video. So I'm just crossing my fingers that the Redskins don't claim him off waivers because uh, we uh, already did the whole Reuben Foster thing. Yep. Yeah. I uh, man, I don't know. I, I I don't know. But but tonight you are bringing to me. Uh, why don't you explain to our listeners what what do you have planned? What are we going to go through? Okay. Well, I, I'm I'm not even sure how how uh, this, this got into my head, but. One of the cool things about the NFL, you got a lot of great names out there. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, the just the the greatest players of all time. You, you got some real names that stick with you over the years. And I thought I'd look at the best names in the history of the NFL. Now, some oh. of these guys are ones you, you've heard of. Some of them are in the Hall of Fame. Some of them are guys you you may never have heard of. About, about the only criteria was they had to play in the NFL. So uh, at the last minute, I realized I had to kick Newt Rockney off the list. Oh, that's what I was going to ask. I, that's the one name that actually sticks out to me, Newt Rockney. Now, for some reason, I have no idea why that sticks out to me as an NFL name because for the life of me, I can't even place who he played for, if he played, or what. who is Newt Rockney? He was the star at Notre Dame and became the coach at Notre Dame. Okay, all right. Because I was also in the movie, you know, Newt Rockney All American with the uh, Ronald Reagan win one for the Gipper speech. There we go. Okay, so that is probably why I remember that name. So we had to kick him off because he's not in the NFL. That's right. So that also okay. uh, that also keeps WVU's Major Harris, which I think is an awesome uh, name. That's out, so great. Out of there. I don't I don't think he made it in the NFL. But uh, see the and the, the thing I like about this list is it's it's completely subjective. So you can argue all you want that I've made that I've made the calls wrong, but you cannot prove me wrong. That's it right. Also means I can't be proven right. <laughs> but um, I'll just give you an example of some of the and you know there's no like it's hard to say what what puts you on this list. It's it's just a feeling. Like you know I, last time I was on, I talked about Colt McCoy. Got to be the greatest name for a uh, a Texas quarterback ever. He That's didn't right. quite make the cut. Warren Moon, great name, didn't quite make it. I um, can't believe Colt McCoy didn't make the cut for you. Wow. He, he did well. He almost slid on after after I bumped Newt Rockney off. Okay. Okay. But, um, yeah, it's just names that stick with you. Names that they just sound cool. You know, uh, I the, I think the best way to do it, if you want, we'll just uh, we'll just start start off the list, and I think people will get a feeling for what I'm talking about, and you know, hopefully, maybe post some comments uh, with with their suggestions of of who we left off. Oh again, yes, can't be proven wrong, can't be proven right. But for, right. first, we'll we'll start with uh, with number ten, the guy who almost made the cut and then when i had to make my adjustments got back on green bay packers wide receiver sterling sharp he had to retire early he had some injury issues that that kind of lingered was, yeah but i, I mean he got, neck, if I remember got right. sterling silver you know you got the alliteration which oh, yeah. you could make him a superhero and then sharp evokes you know nice uh, precise route running that sort of thing so. Here we go. I got I got some Wikipedia knowledge for Sterling Sharp here. All right. Played from 1988 to 1994. So yeah, I was way off with the Green Bay Packers and a career shortened by injuries. His whole career was with the Green Bay Packers. Didn't go to any other team from 88 to 94. I know. I want to say that he is a host for some that's, uh, for that's one of the Shannon shows. Sharp. Shannon. Okay. Because they're and, twin. Uh, are they are they twins or a, brothers? I think they're brothers. Um. Uh, I am. I, I, I've always assumed that I could be wrong. 
brother hall of fame tight end shannon sharp yes there you go okay all right so, so yeah they, I re- they both have the alliteration working for him but yeah sterling i, I don't know just, just got an edge nothing wrong uh, a man named evan bevins should not make fun of anyone's <laughs> name so I'm, I'm i'm not making fun but i just I, I give the edge to sterling in that one very good very good all right number 10 what's number nine number nine uh we're staying with wide receivers and we got to go with a man who, who uh the way he played matched his name lynn swan oh yes lynn swan one of the great wide receivers for the Pittsburgh Steelers, correct? Yes. Way back in the 80s when we first got a VCR, one of the first VHS tapes I had was the NFL's Greatest Hits, and they showed some some classic Lynn Swan moments from the Super Bowl. The catches that that guy made is just insane. And then to have a name like Swan, which just, you know, evokes grace and skill and all completely fit uh, the way he played. I agree. I remember seeing some of the highlights uh, of this man playing. And of course, being a Cleveland Browns fan, you hate watching uh, the Steelers be successful in anything. But uh, they had, I think Swan was, uh, was he on the same team as, oh, uh, why would I forget his name? Terry Bradshaw. Thank you very Terry much. Terry Bradshaw, John yeah. Stallworth was uh, the other receiver. He had Franco Harris. Yeah, that was he he won four uh four Super Bowls with the Steelers and two of them were against the Cowboys, so that does my Redskins heart good. All right, number 8. Number 8. And like I said, the, the these are based on the name, not not necessarily the the career. So we go from Sterling Sharp, who probably would have been a Hall of Famer if he hadn't been cut short, Lynn Swan, who is a Hall of Famer, Stony Case. St- Stony Case. All right, now, never heard of this guy, so... Okay, he played two years for the Cardinals, um, was a backup quarterback for the Cardinals, and spent a season each with the Ravens and the Lions, and according to, uh, I believe it was Pro Football Reference, he had one fourth-quarter comeback and game-winning drive for the Baltimore Ravens. Okay. But the so, guy's name was Stony Case. I mean, he, <laughs> he sounds like, you know, a, a P.I. in a film noir. You know, he got, got kicked off the force, down on his luck, but in comes this beautiful, dangerous woman with one more case, and he leads the Ravens from behind in the fourth quarter for a 1913 victory. That's perfect. That's a movie waiting to be written. <laughs> Stony Case. Beautiful. All right, so number seven. Now, number seven you will be familiar with, I believe. Cleveland Browns wide receiver, Webster Slaughter. Oh, yeah. Webster Slaughter. My goodness. I do remember watching him play, as a matter of fact. Webster Slaughter. I mean, that that's an intimidating name. I, I think of him. I think of Sergeant Slaughter. But honestly, I think of Webster first because, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I grew up watching the Browns with my great uncle. Um, and uh, not only did he play for the Browns, uh, he had stints with the Oilers and then even uh, spent a season or two with the Chiefs, Jets, and Chargers. Oh, very nice. total of 8,111 yards and 44 TDs. Not only did he make his presence known in the NFL, but uh, that name certainly w- will stick with you, just like you oh, said. Yeah. It's, it's something that you would hear, and it would stick with you throughout uh, throughout the ages. I mean, uh, and if he had been on defense... Oh my Slaughter goodness! On defense, yeah, that's uh that 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 would have gotten him him even higher. I think you've heard of the next guy. He did he did spend uh spend some time in the NFL. Did a little acting to a fellow by the name of Dan Marino. Well, Dan in of itself, not necessarily, but but Marino. I always was struck by how Marino fit with the Dolphins. Exactly. I mean, that's why I thought you was going. You, you got you got the parallel with the team, the the colors and everything. And Marino, it it, it, it kind of rolls off the tongue. It seems kind of cool to me. You know, one of the greatest quarterbacks of, of all time. But here's the thing. This is what I learned doing research. You know what Dan Marino's middle name is? Constantine. Con- Constantine. That is what uh, that is what Wikipedia says. No kidding. Okay, and now can you imagine Constantine Marino? <laughs> well, not I mean exactly. that guy. That that sounds like an emperor. Yeah, nothing wrong with the name Dan. My great grandfather's name was was Dan. You know, good, yeah. good good solid name. But but Constantine Marino. That uh that could have challenged for the top spot. Yeah, I remember watching his last game in '99, being at awe on what this guy did. I mean, you just look at the stats. As 61, for 1,361 career passing yards. First guy to pass for 5,000 yards in a season. I mean, you know, yeah. heck, everybody does it now, but uh, <laughs> it's pretty unheard of when he did it. That's right. That's right. Good choice right there. All right, so we're hitting the top five. Top five, um, and, you know, we, we said how how much better of a fit it would have been if Webster Slaughter had been on defense. Okay, here's a guy who was, who was uh, you know, born to play in the NFL, Richard Dent. Oh. <laughs> 
And I imagine you felt like you had been indented when he, when he hit you. <laughs> I've heard of this guy, Richard Dents. Who uh, who did he play for? He he was for the Chicago Bears, part of the uh, Super Bowl. Tw- he was actually the MVP of Super Bowl twenty. You know the Bears shuffling crew. That's Jim right. Jim McMahon and the fridge. You know, if we were considering nicknames, Refrigerator Perry would have to be in there. But uh, oh my goodness. With- you're, so, right. Um, You're right. You're right. We're, but, uh, with, yeah. we're actual given names here. So. Yeah. And Richard Dent always stuck in my head because of the name, but also because, you know, I don't know if you remember uh, ESPN when the Super Bowl would roll around. And now I guess they have it on NFL Network, maybe. But they would always do these recap shows like half hour summaries of the Super Bowls. Again, back in those early VCR days, I recorded the one for Super Bowl 20 and I must have watched that thing like 50 sometimes. Oh, yeah. Did they release like a single uh, the of Super the Super Bowl, Bowl shuffle? Mm-hmm. My buddy had the tape. And- nice. <laughs> Sometimes for me, The Onion is kind of hit or miss. But one of the funniest things I've read in my life, there's an Onion article that I think you can still find. It was came out like 20-some years ago, but it was an article called uh, Bear Shuffling Crew Going Back to the Studio. Okay. Oh, it was fantastic. <laughs> for, for a guy whose name describes his job, Richard Dent. Nice. My goodness, now all of a sudden I've got names that I'm wondering are going to, are going to make this list uh, because one just hit me, but I, I'm going to keep my mouth shut because I certainly don't want to steal his thunder so okay. we're at well, number five you know, we're going number four go ahead i got a uh, another another familiar name just a cool name like even if this guy wasn't a hall of fame uh, super bowl champion quarterback just hearing his name you think that's a pretty cool guy joe okay. montana oh yes yes i mean you know you gotta that's the coolest montana's been much the same way as indiana is never quite as cool as when harrison ford is uh, wearing that hat and uh, cracking that whip oh no kidding let me tell you something at the same guy that had the tape of the super bowl shuffle was a huge huge fan of joe montana and if you look at i can't remember if it's uh, if it's trading cards I'm pretty certain it had to have been trading cards. You know, there's some football cards back in the day, and you saw some Joe Montana. You know, when he'd pass the ball, I remember it. there was always either a trading card or it was a picture of something, and he had that finger up like he was number one. Now, the reason I'm bringing that up is because the buddy that I lived by uh, was a quarterback for the high school Warren High School football team. Okay. Uh, during the during the period of time I was there, when, when I lived by him, me and him would go out and pass the ball, n- namely so he could practice and me just so I could hang out and have a good time. Right. But you know, of course, he would always put that finger up uh, every once in a while when we were passing. You know, he put that finger up like he was Joe Montana. So I know <laughs> he was he was a big Joe Montana fan. But yeah, that takes me back. And of course, Joe Montana happens to be related to the first ever football game that I ever bought. Which oh, yeah. was Joe Montana Sports Talk Football for the Sega Genesis. There you go. I nice. didn't have. I played a Tecmo Super Bowl a lot and provided my own commentary. Oh boy, which is kind of weird now that I think about it. But um, <laughs> yeah, Tecmo Super Bowl they got crazy. They put all the teams and you could have incomplete passes. And the oh, Seahawks my. uniforms were blue and silver instead of pink, like they were on Tecmo Bowl, which uh, I never fully understood. Now that's a good pick, Joe Montana. Uh, that was what was that number five? That was number th- number four. Number four. So we got to get to number three. All right. So, yeah, we're, we're we're up in the top three. You know, I I I had him him in Montana pretty pretty neck and neck, but this one uh, he doesn't have as many Super Bowls. But uh, one of the great quarterbacks, Johnny Unitas. Yes, yes I mean, the, you know, there's so many ways he he sounds like like some sort of you know Greek character. Or uh, on uh, speaking of video games, one of the names I I punch in on the the games where you can make your own players is a uh, John Leonidas. Kind of a mashup, Johnny Unitas and the guy from 300. You can cut that out. That's I got fine. it. No, I got uh, it. I got it. <laughs> but uh, can't quite explain why Montana, Joe Montana sounds so cool. But Johnny Unitas, you know, you got the All-American name. And then Unitas, I mean, you can go with Unite Us or mm-hmm. it just sounds awesome. Great. You know? Col- he was a Colts quarterback, right? Yeah, Baltimore Colts originally drafted by the Steelers and they cut him. Unitas was playing semi-pro, I, w- I was reading. And um, Colts uh, coach was like, yeah, you know, come on, you can be our backup. The start went down and, and United stepped in uh, had had a record uh, I think it still stands and probably won't be broken 47 consecutive games with a touchdown pass my gosh from 57 to 60 I, I read somewhere that uh, that was like the football equivalent of Joe DiMaggio's streak 47 yeah and 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 in in the 50s and you know early 60s so it wasn't you know it wasn't like it is now where uh everybody's Beckham's throwing touchdown passes yeah exactly exactly this is the part that blew my mind you know what johnny unitas's middle name is constantine are you kidding me 
I am wow. not. Wow. <laughs> I'm calling conspiracy. I didn't get the Marino one off of anywhere but uh, but Wikipedia, but but when I saw that for uh, John Constantine Unitas, I was like, oh, come on. But uh, yeah, it was like that's... Britannica.com, some like legit encyclopedia thing. John Constantine Unitas. <laughs> to any of you prospective fathers out there who really hope your kid grows up to be a great football player, it might not hurt to give him the middle name Constantine. Yeah, apparently it's... it's... There is some precedent. That's right. That's right. All right. So we're moving on to number two. Number two, a guy who, when you say his name, you feel like you just got tackled or you're, okay. you just went as the tackle. Chuck Bednarik. Okay. All right. Never heard of this guy. Interesting oh. name. Okay. He played for the Eagles his whole career, 1949 to 1962, was considered the last of the great two way players, was a, nicknamed the 60 Minute Man, also nicknamed Concrete Charlie which is almost as hard-hitting a name as uh, Chuck Bednarik, but he actually uh, sold concrete in the offseason. Okay, all right. Not so, not, not, he, not an allusion to his toughness, but to his actual day job. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it, it, it kills two birds with one stone. Um, he is actually the namesake of the College Defensive Player of the Year Award, Chuck Bednarik Award. Okay, all right. He also is famous or infamous. You know, we, we talk about some of the, the rough hits these days, and there wasn't anything inappropriate about this hit, but, but you know, Frank Gifford, the great New York Giants player. Mm -hmm. Chuck Bednarik knocked Frank Gifford out in a game. I mean, flattened him. Frank Gifford temporarily retired from the NFL. I think it was more than a year before he was back playing football again. Wow. And it, it was just, I, I, I remember watching watching a, a, a video about it. It just, it was, it's like considered like the greatest or worst, depending yeah. on uh, if you're Frank Gifford, <laughs> hit in, like in NFL history. It just, I mean, he, he laid him out. And uh, I, I mean, literally Frank Gifford was like, yeah, I don't know if I can play football again. <laughs> And I'm not, I'm not mocking anymore. Frank Gifford. I mean, I would, I, I hurt watching, you know, the clip. Oh. Um, and this wasn't Bob Smith that, no, that hit you. No. This was Chuck Bednarik. <laughs> nice. I mean, you you, you got to force the, the syllables out there. Got it, okay. got it. But it, as, as good as that was, there is so, some nickname in here, although everybody uh, just knew him by the nickname. It, it's kind of like Magic Johnson. To me, the greatest name in NFL history, another two-way player, Chicago Bears fullback and tackle Bronislaw Bronco Nagurski. Give us the lowdown. Okay, I, I pulled up some stuff from the, the, the Hall of Fame on this guy. Uh, many eyewitness observers insisted that for sheer brutal line smashing, no one came close to Nagurski. Never fancy, he just ran straight ahead, over, and through the opposition. And uh, he was also known for his blocking, and his tackling was as effective as any the game has ever seen. Said he played full, four positions at the University of Minnesota, All-American as a fullback and a tackle. And he was also known uh, to, uh, to throw a pass, uh, no the jump pass. He would fake a plunge through the line, step back, and lob a pass to a waiting receiver. Wow. And, and you said this guy, what, what year was this again? What years were this, was this again? Let's see. He was in, uh, he was in the 30s. He, he played for the Bears. I, I, for, I forget when, it, when he started, but I know he, his, his jump pass to Red Grange helped them uh, win the NFL title over uh, Portsmouth in 1932. Jeez. And then in 1938, he retired because uh, the Bears wouldn't give him a raise in salary. Salary to six thousand five hundred dollars. Oh so he retired gosh. to become a professional wrestler. Oh my goodness! I, I, this might be why I've heard of this guy. How do you spell his name? His last name? N a g u r s k i. Yeah, he uh, he did come back to the Bears in 1943 because uh, they were running low on players because of World War II. Thirty five years old after he'd been out of the league for five years, he helped them. Uh, uh, win a must-win game to set up the 1943 NFL title game against, alas, the Redskins, who never had much luck against the Bears in the playoffs. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, he ended his career by scoring the touchdown that put the Bears ahead to stay in the 1943 NFL title game. And, I mean, the name, I mean, Bronco. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's, there's a whole team, not named after him, but powerful animal, Nagurski, almost as rough a name as Bednarik. That name lives up to, to the way this guy played. Yeah, and I honestly think the reason why I've heard of this guy is because of the whole uh, wrestling aspect of things. He's in the National Wrestling Hall of Fame as well. Nice. Uh, yeah, native of northern Minnesota, Bronco Nagurski is one of the greatest football players of all time and is a member of both the College Football Hall of Fame and the Professional Football Hall of Fame. He was the first All-American, blah, blah, blah. While 
starring with the Chicago Bears in the late 30s. Nagurski approached Luthes about wrestling in the offseason and used his great athletic skills to become a huge draw in wrestling, holding the world NWA title several times in the late 1930s and early 1940s. Bronco was a hero to millions of young athletes across the nation, including a young Minnesota wrestler named Vern Gagne. Bronco died in 1990 at the age of 82. His place in sports history is secure for all time. Yeah, I we have a quite a few of us that play on here are wrestling fans, and I'm sure a lot of people would appreciate your pick of the number one best name in the NFL. Now, let me tell you, the one that I had is not, did, not did, it, did not make the list, but then I look at it and I think to myself, it is not the best NFL name of all time. It is clearly the worst NFL name of all time. I think I know where you're going with this. <laughs> Would you like to take a guess? And, uh, you know, I, I actually posed this question on Facebook a while back, and I kept getting people saying this, and uh, my humor is as juvenile as the next one, but are you about to say Dick Butkus? <laughs> Dick Butkus. Buckus all the way, man. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. Dick Buckus was a guy who you would never make fun of his name to his face. No, you would not. <laughs> a linebacker for the Chicago Bears, right? Oh, yes. Oh, boy. And he is as tough as they come. Absolutely. Uh, you can be as tough as they come, but with a name like Dick Buckus, it's kind of tough to make the toughest names of all time, according but to Evan Bevins. It, it might be a, a boy named Sue kind of thing. That, uh, you right. know, that, that, that helped make him tougher. That's right. That's right. So. Who knows? Well, that was great. That was a great list, Evan Bevins. I'm glad you came up with this idea and, and brought it here to the podcast. Uh, hey, so there's there's nothing I like more than making uh, pointlessly subjective lists uh, with information that cannot help me anywhere uh, in, in real life. So uh, there you go. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, if anybody out there is listening, has a name that they'd like to uh, submit to us just, just for consideration or somebody that we missed, just like Evan said, please let us know there on the, the Facebook forum that we have out there and we'd love to we'd love to hear what your thoughts are now it's my turn evan bevins i like i said brought something to you that i have conjured up in the last okay. minutes as i was making my notes so all right here's what we're going to do uh, i like to do i like to have quizzes and contests and stuff like that on my podcast okay so tonight what we're going to do i like to think i'm uh, pretty good at trivia so yeah yeah so that's what we're going to do we're going to do a little bit of trivia okay this particular list I'm getting most of this information from is off of the Orlando Sentinel.com. All okay. right. We have a list here of some of the greatest fictional coaches ah. of all time. Okay? okay. Now we're not talking in it just NFL. We're talking all of sports. Okay. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the name. And there was like 30 on here, so I picked 10. Okay. I picked 10. So I'm going to give you the name, and your job will be to give me the movie. All right. All right? Now, if you Let's can't get can it... Do. If you can't get it with the name, I'll give you a description and maybe a couple other clues, and then we'll we'll see how we can do. All right. All right. So starting off on the bottom here, we're looking at a lady by the name of Molly McGrath. Uh, she was a coach. Okay. Does it ring any bells? Well, it 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 does it does sound familiar. Let's see, Molly McGrath. I feel I I don't think I've seen it, but I feel like I should know. I'm I'm gonna gonna have to take a hint. Uh, okay. Here we an, go. An auspicious start, but. Here's the description. She might be a girl, but McGrath, played by Goldie Hawn, was a oh, right uh, person. Oh, quarterback for the princess. Uh, nope. <laughs> what? <laughs> now we're going for the movie. That's the name of the movie. That's what you're going for. That's what I was thinking, but obviously that's wrong. Okay, 1986. Okay. All right, starring Goldie Hawn, James Keach, and Swoozy Kurtz, <sighs> and is also the film debut of Wesley Snipes. Oh boy, was it? Oh, wait a I second. Thinking, wait a second. Okay. Kevin Reeder and Woody Harrelson. Man, I'm, I'm going to know when you when you say it, but I, I keep thinking that there was some movie like Quarterback Princess. I'm going to look this up because we're going to have to find out about Quarterback Princess and see if it stars Goldie Hawn. Maybe that's the one with Helen Hunt. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to look that up, but I won't look up the Goldie Hawn one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw in the towel on this one and hope for 90%. All right, here we go. The name of the movie is Wildcats. Ah, see, I knew I would recognize it when you said it. <laughs> Quarterback I it, Princess. I should know that, but yeah, let me, I'm going to look up Quarterback Princess because, uh, uh, now I'm thinking that's Helen Hunt. You're right. I'm looking at it right now. 1983, the description here on IMDb, the Mida family has moved to Oregon, the do and daughter Tammy wants to play quarterback for the high school football team. There's just one problem. She's a girl. Oh, so, and it stars, uh, I forget his name, but Dana Elkar from MacGyver. 
Oh, no kidding. The uh, oh, was he the villain? No, uh, I, I, no, he was, he was, I, I haven't seen him. I'm, I'm just seeing his name on the list, but uh, I don't remember him as being anything but MacGyver's friend. What's his name? Yeah, <laughs> MacGyver's friends. What's his name? Dana Elkar. <laughs> I can't. I can't believe that I don't. That I don't know that. Okay, um, now remember, I mean, I'm not like a die a diehard uh, MacGyver fan, but I mean, there are only two characters on that show. <laughs> I remember the villain. Who was the villain in MacGyver? Because there was Murdoch. Yes, Pete. Man, it was Pete on Pete? MacGyver. Got it. Got it. Okay. All right. All so right. now remember. Well, uh, so I showed that I have extensive knowledge of another movie I've never seen. <laughs> that, but not that one's not on this list. Remember, this is fictional coaches. Okay. Fictional, my bad. Fictional coaches. So, all right. So we're moving on. All right. So this coach goes by the name of Chester Lee. All right. Wow. Sound, now, okay. Not, nice. not even a little. Not even a little. That's all <laughs> oh, right. Oh, man, I'm, I'm letting you down. Get get the next 10 ready. <laughs> <laughs> Chester Lee, played by Rodney Dangerfield. Ladybugs. There you go. Ladybugs. All right. It's a wacky youth soccer coach of this team, which happens to be the name of the movie. Ladybugs. And you know what? I'm betting, even though I haven't seen the movie, that he doesn't get no respect in it. Yeah. <laughs> Put money on that one right there. <laughs> There's definitely a nine out of ten chance on that one. Uh, all right, this uh, next one I have listed here. I don't know if I've actually watched this movie all the way through, uh, but this coach goes by the name of Phil Brickma. Yeah, I, I really, it's these ones were at the bottom of the list and they were pretty obscure. And I think that's why they were at the bottom. You know, I, I guess there's a, a, a wide world of sports movies that I have not at least glanced at the uh, at the box for. Um, yeah, if you, if you can give me an actor or a sport, I might be able to narrow it down. OK, so this is a baseball movie. OK, he may not have been he- a head coach. He was a coach, but he's not a head coach. Okay. But Phil Brickma was one of the more entertaining characters in this movie. This baseball movie came out in 1993. It is a comedy. Phil Brickma was portrayed by Daniel Stern. Rookie of the year. There you go. Very good. <laughs> I saw that one, too. I saw that one. When you when you said baseball in 1993, I'm like, okay, I, I did see that one. All right. Like I said, I think as we approach the top here, you're going to be getting them on name easy. All right. Let, let, let's hope so. Or uh, people who enjoy a, a little schadenfreude may hope I don't. You know? <laughs> All right. Next up, uh, a coach by the name of Danny O'Shea. Danny. Oh, OK. Now I should know that one. Danny <laughs> O'Shea. Oh, that sounds so familiar. Oh, can you, boy. Can you give me a sport? I can give you a sport. It is football. It is not the NFL. Okay. However, the title of this movie does have an NFL team name in it. Oh. All right, let me give you... Little Giants? Yes, very good. O'Shea always lived in the shadow of his older brother, Kevin. Rick Moranis versus Ed O'Neill, right? (laughs) That's right. But with a group of unlikely football players, including his daughter, Becky Icebox O'Shea, he shows up as brothers Urbania Cowboys. Now, this one I know, but I've watched this movie over and over and over, okay? Okay. All right. So the name of this fictional coach is Chubbs Peterson. Oh, okay. And uh, he was uh, Adam Sandler's golf coach, right? That, that's right. Adam Sandler. Happy Gilmore. Golf. There you go. Could have been the next Arnold Palmer, but an alligator bit off his hand at a tournament in Florida. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The price is wrong. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Big guilty pleasure is Happy Gilmore. Oh, yeah. Uh, man, there, there were, you know, people now act like Adam Sandler never made a good movie or a funny movie. We had lots oh, of funny movies. I he was... just got to the point where people stopped saying no to him. Uh, <laughs> All right. Next up, top five territory here. Okay. All right. The name of this fictional coach, a guy by the name of Irv Blitzer. Irv Blitzer. I just see Wolf Blitzer. Man, same um, here. <laughs> First thing I thought of. No, no, that that one's not ringing any bells at all. all I mean, right. this, Danny this, O'Shea sounded familiar, but I didn't know him from Little Giants. This, uh, <laughs> yeah, this description is going to give you. It's well, going to give it all away. You ready? You want to give me just a sport? Sure. Uh, oh man, I don't even know if I can give you just a sport without giving it away. Um, oh wait, is it Cool Runnings? Yes, it's Cool okay, Runnings. There you go. <laughs> No one was better to coach a Jamaican bobsled team other than Irv Blitzer. I don't know if I ever watched that all, all the way through, but uh, yeah, when you get to uh, to you know sports where there's only one movie, I'm, yeah. I'm still waiting for the great uh, Zach Galifianakis curling movie that I think is just out there waiting to happen. Be ready, folks. Jo- I will tell you that Dodgeball's coach made this list, but I did not put him on here. So he, oh, he, made, yeah. uh, he made this uh, Orlando Sentinel top 30. Uh, if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. <laughs> 
So here we go. Uh, number four on my list is Bud Kilmer. Bud Kilmer. Portrayed by John Voight. Oh, um, Varsity Blues. Very good. All... Which uh, my main uh, my main knowledge of Varsity Blues comes from the episode of The Office where they started watching Varsity Blues after they ran out of training videos to watch each Monday. <laughs> All Bud Kilmer cared about was winning his 23rd division title with the West Canaan Coyotes. That win at all costs <laughs> attitude cost him his star quarterback and ultimately his team. Yes, Varsity Blues. All right, number three. Oh, boy. Now, see, here's the thing. I, I, I don't blame you for being at a disadvantage because what would be nice is if, you know, since this is an audio medium, I think that if I threw the picture of these people up in front of you, you'd probably be able to get it pretty quickly. Sure, let's go with that. <laughs> This next one, I don't know if I would remember the name, but I would definitely, if I saw the picture, I'd be like immediately like, oh, okay, I know who that is. So this next coach is a guy by the name of Jim Dugan. Oh, that, that sounds very familiar. Can you give me the sport? Baseball. Baseball. Oh, um, Major League. Mm. No? He, nope, nope. Uh, this one, five words. There's no crying in baseball. Oh, a league of their own. <laughs> ah. Oh, man. Now, by the I great Tom Hanks. Oh, I, sh- I should remember that. I uh, A league of their own, aside from being a great movie, is uh, one of the few DVDs I own that doesn't have closed captioning. <laughs> that doesn't have closed captioning. I always laughed when DVDs came out because I, I clung to VHS till the bitter end, man. Okay. Um, and I always laughed. I'm like, oh, closed captioning is a feature? Big deal. <laughs> Apparently it is. <laughs> Because uh, when, when, when you got kids that are either talking or sleeping when you're trying to watch movies, closed captioning is a very good thing. So one day I was like, let's watch a league of their own. I haven't seen that in a while. What? No closed captioning? Okay, next. <laughs> you're preaching to the choir when it comes to closed captioning. Netflix is set up with closed captioning right now. Hulu's set up with closed captioning because, number one, I'm getting older. And maybe perhaps my hearing is going. I don't know. But number two, there is at least one iPad going in the same room that my TV is on every single time I want to watch a show. So it's like, there's no way I can actually watch a show without something else trying to overwhelm the TV. See, there, there's know. a drawback to closed captioning, though. Okay. This, this may end up on the cutting room floor because it has nothing to do with sports, but closed <laughs> captioning can, spo- can can have major spoilers in it. There uh, are, you know, I, I, I've had uh, characters who, it was supposed to be a surprise, and it's like, oh, that's who said this. Yeah, their voice off screen, but it says the character's name. And yeah, you're like, and then wait a second, uh, where this guy come from? And then there's the movie uh, Devil that M. Night Shyamalan produced. Four people in an elevator and something really screwy is going on with it. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, it, it keeps you guessing pretty well unless you're watching it on closed captioning. Okay. Because three of the characters have names and one of them doesn't. Oh, no. It's like, well, what's different about that? Pr- oh, oh, because they're evil. Okay, what? gotcha. <laughs> That's great. So, so folks, if Jesse doesn't edit this out and you're watching Devil, don't turn on the closed captioning. Oh, my goodness. Don't do it. Number two. Here we go. The name of this coach is Gordon Bombay. Oh, Gordon Bombay, the Mighty Ducks. Very the only nice. movie franchise I know of that gets progressively better with each sequel. Mighty That's- Ducks. It's okay. D2, a lot better. D3, love it. No kidding. I, now, I can't D3 recall. D3 is the D3. only one in the series I own. Does Emilio Estevez, is he in all three of them? He is, but his his role is uh, diminished in the third one. He turns the team over to a retired uh, hockey player. I forget the first name. Coach Orion, played by Jeffrey Nordling. Okay. He kind of butts heads with uh, Charlie, a.k.a. Joshua Jackson, and um, they, they go to this uh, private school. So you got the Ducks, or the new kids on scholarship. They end up facing off against the varsity team. It's funny. It's heartfelt. I have used it in a Sunday school lesson before. Um, nice. Cracks me up. Yeah, love it. Uh, All right. So yeah, Gordon Bombay. All right, he was one of the ones I was hoping I was hoping you'd get. Uh, yeah, he was he was number five on their list here. Now I stuck mostly with movies. They threw some TV personalities in here as well. Okay. And uh, so I kept them off my list because I stuck with just film. And number one on that list ended up being a TV personality, which was the coach from um, Coach. Hold on, no, not the coach from Coach, which I'm oh, okay. surprised he didn't make the list. <laughs> Wait, Hayden Fox didn't make the list? He did not make that list. Okay, this is Holy not directed cow. at you, but I question the integrity of that list. Yeah, um, wow. However, I, for your purposes, it works fine, but yeah, you man. have Hayden Fox. Uh, yeah, okay. they no, they had the uh, the coach from uh, Friday Night Lights. 
Okay. Huh. So I, now I've not watched a bit of that show. I think I watched the movie, but I never watched the show. But again, I assume he was such a good coach because he had uh, the next day's newspaper delivered to him. Nice. You know what? I was looking for that reference right there. I, that's the one I wanted because that's my favorite show that that act, that guy ever. Oh my gosh, created. I love that show. How come that doesn't pop up on streaming and and uh, syndication all the time? My cousin's wife just posted a picture of somebody had got her the DVD set of that show um, nice what, what was it called uh early edition early edition that's right she just posted i'm not kidding you like three days ago uh that she is, was so excited awesome. she got a hold of it but, and i remember do, do you remember the time they did a crossover episode with martial law no oh did my gosh really? you martial law with sam hung kind of like the uh the husky jackie chan yes Okay, oh they did gosh. an early edition martial law crossover. <laughs> That's perfect. That is perfect. That that show only ran for what, like two years? Two, or, two or three. Yeah, two or three, two or three seasons. Yeah, but uh, uh, oh, yeah, I, I love that show. Yeah, I like the guy who stars in it too. He's probably like he's up there on my in my echelon of actors. I can't remember his name. Kyle Chandler. Thank you very much. He, uh, yeah, he does a great job. He's, but I've never watched Friday Night Lights, and I've heard he does a great job on there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I've I've heard good things about it, but I I, I never uh, I never watched that either. Um, and uh, you know, to to steer it into comic books, I think uh, Gambit was his running back. Gambit, ru- <laughs> Gambit yeah. was his running back. Box office poison, Taylor Kitsch, or however you say his name. Oh, I okay. feel bad for the guy. I mean, he wasn't what uh, he wasn't the problem with X Men Origins Wolverine. He wasn't the problem with Battleship. No, the no. problem was they made a movie out of Battleship. Actually, if it hadn't been based on the board game, it would have been a, a, an okay movie. Um, <laughs> All so. right. All right. Okay. Well, let's get to our number one here. Number, number one. one. Number one fictional film coach, according to Jesse's list here, is a coach by the name of Norman Dale. Norman Dale. Uh, Gene Hackman and Hoosiers. Nice. Very nice. Uh, you know, I hadn't watched that movie up until about, I think it was about four years ago. It was the first time I ever sat down and watched that movie. Everybody just loved that movie. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, I think I put a Twitter poll out there before I did it. And this is before, you know, once I started getting into Twitter. And uh, wrestling personality Al Snow, I asked him, I said, which movie should I see? And I gave him a list of three. And Al Snow actually re- responded and said, you need to watch Hoosiers. Yeah, I was like, all right. <laughs> so anyway, Al Snow, ladies and gentlemen. But yes, Norman Dale uh, makes the top of this list was that a movie that you grew up on or was that something you came late to i did didn't see it see it or, or originally um i i, I came a, a little late to it um but yeah i, I watched it on video a, a few times i mean you know the, the the one that sticks with you is um you know the part where they're at the state championship in the huge arena and he has the kids measure the basket you know measure the lines and the that's height right. of the basket he's like just like back at home that's right that's right so, <laughs> well now, now Evan, the, the coach i was hoping you were going to draw yeah. Uh Ed Straight Arrow Gennaro. Okay. This sounds familiar, but I don't I don't from, recall this and I can tell you that wasn't on top thirty. Fa- oh man. For my personal favorite sports movie, even more than D three, Necessary Roughness. Oh my goodness. Holy Toledo. I remember going to watch that movie with my stepdad and it was one of the first ever like sports movies I went to go watch Scott Bakula. I'm a huge fan of Scott Bakula. Oh yeah. Uh, being a fan I mean, of you Quantum can even Leap pretend he just leapt and he just quantum leaped into Paul Blake and, <laughs> yes, and the movie still holds please. up. <laughs> and Cindy Crawford, right? No, no. Kathy Ireland. Kathy Ireland. That's Cindy Crawford. Kathy Ireland. My goodness. But oh my gosh. I love it. Watch that there, at my bachelor party. There, <laughs> there are three or four scenes that I can remember. Okay. Well, then I'm gotta be stands honest. out to me is uh Manu Manu okay. the, uh, the Samoan center who also went on to play E Honda in the Jean-Claude Van Damme Street Fighter movie Street Fighter movie Street Fighter the movie yes uh, uh, which is better than The Legend of Chun-Li or The Rise of Chun-Li or whatever almost came this close to watching I actually think I have it on DVD down here somewhere. I, I, I watched it and the thing is if you take the if you watch the Van Damme movie unironically um, so, such as you're not just waiting to see how um, how uh, he he mangles uh, curse words. He, he doesn't really cuss. He just starts yelling, and you you kind of get what he's going for. Ah. Um, but if you watch it completely unironically, I would argue it's still better than um, than the uh, Chun-Li. the Chun Li movie. Ugh. But yeah, what? no necessary roughness. You got oh yeah, the other uh, Sinbad as the tackle. Yep. You got you got Jason Bateman as the rich kid. Well, so then, then there's a whole slew of NFL cameos where they play the uh, the prison team. Man, oh man, that 
I, I, I think it's, it was on, it was either on Netflix or Hulu a while back. And I was like, man, I'd really like to watch this again. I just never, never had a chance. Hector I, El, 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 Elizondo. Yes. Hey, I recognize him as uh, the guy on, uh, uh, he play, if currently he's playing on Last Man Standing. Last Man Standing. One of our favorite shows around here in the Star Trek household. Oh, yes. Excellent show. Uh, I recognize that. Man, it's been long, too long since I've watched that movie. I, uh, I I had it on DVD. I somehow lost the DVD and uh, was so despondent that I bought it as a two-pack with uh, Against the Ropes, starring Meg Ryan and Omar Epps, which oh, I still have never watched. That's but I have Necessary Roughness again. That's right. It's a, it is a, it's a price that you are willing to pay. Not a problem yeah, at all. That, that's why I own Kazam, is because... Because it was in a two pack with Spaced Invaders. Spaced, dude, we did a commentary for that. Oh man, it's on the network. If you want to hear it, don't don't expect anything great. But I'll tell you right now, I never watched it. All right, and it, I, so I sat down with Justin Thomas, Mark Radlich, and Ronnie Adams, and all three of us sat down and watched this movie together. Of course, we tore it to shreds. I didn't know what the heck was going on. Justin Thomas was the one that suggested it, but he because he loves that movie. Oh yeah, uh, he was a big fan. And yeah, so we had we had a good time. I I but legitimately just watched that movie probably about well they just did the um, anniversary they just did with the War of the Worlds. I'm gonna 80th, tell you maybe I think it was the 80th uh, broadcast, the 80th anniversary of that broadcast. So that's why Justin wanted to do it. I think we did it November 1st. So it was a little bit more than a month ago. Oh and man! So I anyway, track that one down too. Eh, well, like I said, we just we just cut up watching the whole. You can put the movie on and then listen to us in the background react to some of the silliness that occurs in that movie. Uh, but uh, but yeah, we had a good time. So well, speaking of good times, me and you have had a good time tonight. I think we had a we had a blast going through our lists. We started talking about football, right? Yeah, at some point <laughs> went into movies talking about video games. That's okay. I, that's the kind of conversations I enjoy. All right. So. So now the next thing we've got to do is we got to go through the rundown for the week. Speaking of lists, we'll go down through the rundown for the week and we'll go down, we'll run down the overall as well. So uh, anything you'd like to say before we jump into the week results? Just that if I was Mark Sanchez, I would not show up to work next Sunday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I, it's it, it's not funny, but you got two quarterbacks who broke their right leg. I, if I'm Sanchez, I'm just going to be like, you know what? I'm going back and hanging out with my kids. Yeah, there's it's ten, it tends to be a trend going on there in Philly. Yeah. Or, or, excuse me, Washington. Uh, I was thinking of Philly because I saw the news. Did he play for the Eagles at one point or – he didn't play for the Eagles at one point, yeah, I, did he? I think he did. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. He uh, he cycled through a, a few. Let me uh, let me go back and see which. Uh because I, I remember, well, I mean, once the uh, once the Cowboys beat the Saints this week, I knew I wasn't going to have a great week. Yeah, wow. That set a lot of people on their ear. Uh, I don't know if anybody picked the the Cowboys, unless it was Big Ben, who always seems to have some kind of crazy, crazy pick every once in a while that makes you go, wait a second. Um, yes, he did play for the Eagles, by the way, 2014 and 2015, because the, the news by I saw said something along the lines of, yes, uh, Philadelphia Eagles fans. That is Mark Sanchez under center for the Redskins. <laughs> no, no, nobody had uh, nobody had Dallas. Nobody had Dallas. Nobody had Dallas. That does not surprise me. And I, ha- I I'm pretty certain I had decent points on the. Uh, why is this not coming up? I had 12. You had 11. Okay. Yeah, um, I had decent the, uh, points on them. The Packers losing, I did not expect. Neither did Mike McCarthy. <laughs> um, not only did the Packers lose, but the, he, you know, the Pack lost him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that that didn't work out. Oh yeah, there. Wow, there's just a huge stretch of uh, red games for me. Um, I had 14 on the Packers. Mm. Yeah, and, one of the um, funnier funnier memes I saw, I think it was today or yesterday, was uh, it, it said "Go Pack," and then Mike McCarthy's like, "Yeah, Go Pack," and the, and the other guy's like, "No, Go Pack." <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Oh, that's rough. Yeah. yeah, there's a I I I took some beatdowns. Green Bay was a big one for me. I had 15 on them. Uh and you know what's funny is Dwayne Williams, I know is a, a Green Bay Packers fan. Uh-huh. And there's normally you see Dwayne, he doesn't pick the Thursday game. I don't know if it just gets by him or or what happens, but he doesn't he he misses that first game and then he picks the Sunday games. Well, this time he left a big gap there in that Green Bay game, which actually if you look, I don't think he picked a 15-pointer. Uh uh-huh. either way, and most likely he probably would have took the pack uh it would i tell you what he would be kicking himself right now if he meant to actually take the arizona card 
Cardinals because he would be yeah. so upset the way the pack have been treated. But no one expected that. No one expects the Spanish Inquisition either. And the, the lowest everybody anybody had on the Packers was like ten points. Yeah, that's and a lot of people lowest. had sixteen. Including, yeah, let's see, the Bungles had 16 on them. Um, we have Steel Curtain had 16. And Steel Curtain, who, by the way, yeah, we'll talk about. She she moved up in the overall. So, yeah, nobody saw that coming at all. Uh, and what was the other upset? Nope. Somebody actually took Jacksonville. So yeah. win took Jacksonville. So My, those were the two games, really, that everybody got red on. Let's see. Did anybody, did anybody take the Giants? Yes. Yeah. Three people Wolves took, took the, Giants. the Giants. Yep. Wolves took the Giants. So uh, win took the Giants. And then for one Hob- and two points each. Oh, Hobo Samurai had nine on the Giants. Yeah, he would not be sitting where he's at right now if it wasn't for the Giants overtime win there. So not a believer in Chase Daniel. We're going well. His team is the Giants. Oh, okay. So and he has been accused of being a homer by totally eighties Pat Mullen. Uh, so Hobo Samurai is Jason Teasley. He's been on the show before. We had him on here a couple times. Uh, you know he's always been a big Giants fan. Uh, nine points on the Giants against Chicago is that's a Hail Mary. Uh, and it looked like the Giants had control of this game right up to the very end when Chicago tied it. But then of course the Giants came through in overtime. Uh, and boy, it was, (laughs) boy, I'm sure he was biting his nails just along, you know, along with the rest of every Giants fan out there. I almost always pick the Redskins, but, uh, I, I don't, I didn't have the confidence to point not to put nine points on them. Exactly. So, uh, kudos to him. All right. So let's go. Here we go. We're going to go down from, or we're going to go up from bottom to top. So here we go. We, Week 13, going from bottom to top. So there is a three-way tie for last place. All three ended up with 69 points. Hobo Samurai, Dwayne Williams, and The Bungles suffer at the bottom of the pack. Hobo Samurai could have suffered a worse fate if it weren't for the, his Giants, getting him nine points in overtime, and he was only one of three that took them. In the 70-point range, and in 11th sits Thug and Harmony, who scored 77. In the 80-85-point to 85 point range are your hosts for tonight's show, NFL Super Pro, uh, who scored 84 and lands in 10th, and beating him by one point is myself, Stizzy Stompers. Uh, so, yeah. We... Demand a recount. <laughs> what did we have different here? You took the only game we have different is Philly and Washington. Uh, Everything else is the exact same. Uh, well, so, it all comes down to the points. Yeah, it all comes down to that one point, too, that you had on Washington. If you would have put it on Philly, you, me and you would have been tied. Go go with my heart. The Redskins have already won more games than I expected them to this year. So, uh, yeah. I understand. I understand. Going, yeah, there's a three-way tie for sixth. Mammal Cat, Freebird, and Sawin, each at 87 points and if it wasn't for that crazy finish to the Sunday night game and, and if the Steelers would have won we would all actually be looking up at to win in first place by a pretty large margin he had like 15 I think on yeah. the, the the Steelers so and if everybody would have lost their Chargers pick he would he would have been up there I think with like 112 uh, I'll also mention that Sawin took the Giants over Chicago not gaining him much but keeping him relevant now if you look at the overall you're going to see the same picture for fifth through third last week's guest totally 80s Pat nabs fifth with 88 points, falling one point behind fourth place. Go luck yourself, who had 89, and third place with 92 points is Steel Curtain. If you caught last week's show, Pat called the Chargers win in his upset pick of the week, and he was one of three that had a decent number on them. So thumbs up to Totally 80s Pat Mullen. Then we have Wilvis, who grabs second place with 93 points, and yet another person that can thank the New York Giants as he had one point on them, and that was all he needed to get, one point ahead of third. And as if he felt redemption was absolutely necessary after last week's abysmal performance, this week he shows up only missing five games, his worst loss being the 14 points he had on the Packers, but the rest he only had single digits on. He was also one of three that took the Chargers over the Steelers with eight points. Congratulations, go out Raider Nation for winning week 13 and winning his third week for the year, something no one else has duplicated. Nice. So, yeah, so there we go from bottom to top. Any any other commentary on the week there before we move to the overall? No, just if uh, if the Redskins can't win, I at least want the Cowboys to lose, and I didn't get either of them. So, uh, <laughs> oh, ooh, bad week for you all around then. Yeah. Not good. All right, well, let's take a look at the overall. So we have some movers and shakers this week. Six position 
changes occurred this past week in the overall. And that is what the 16-point weeks will get you. Things are going to either start opening up for some people or get real close for some people. So looking at 14th spot sits a backsliding Hobo Samurai who just could not keep up with Raider Nation's outstanding Week 13 performance and is now 22 22 points behind him as they trade places in the overall. Moving up a spot and tying for 11th is Freebird. He and Dwayne Williams are duking it out, possibly eyeballing the top 10, but they are going to have to cover some ground as the win sits in 10th, 23 points ahead of them. Unmoving in ninth spot is Thug and Harmony, who looks to try and advance if he has a stellar week, 21 points behind eighth. Now, speaking of eighth, we now get to talk about the race for fourth. Yes. Eighth is Mammal Cat, six points behind, seventh place, the Bungles, who, after a rough week 13, he drops two spots in the overall and is the worst performer of the week. However, he is only five points behind Stizzy, who jumped a spot to sixth. And back in the top five if is fifth spot, Wilvis, who is 11 points ahead of Stizzy. And fourth spot, Evan Bevins, NFL Super Pro, has a two-point cushion on Wilvis right now. Bizarre. <laughs> now, you add all that up, for those five spots, we are only looking at a total of 24 points. And last week, with the return of the 16-point games, we saw a gap from first to last of near 30 points. So it is very possible someone could jump a huge gap and become a player for the top three if they have an amazing week. So, yeah, be ready. Duly uh, noted. Be ready, sir. You better start putting some... Uh, make it, Stay consistent. That's probably the best thing I could say. If you stay consistent, you won't have to worry about anything. But, uh, yeah, uh, eighth spot on up has got its eyeball out for you, NFL Super Pro. We're coming after you. All right. I hear you. <laughs> now, I, I feel like I hit rock bottom and bounced, so hopefully <laughs> I keep that trajectory going. <laughs> now, that amazing race aside, not to be outdone, our top three continue to do battle. Totally 80s Pat Mullen, who has tied, who was tied for first last week, now finds himself tied for second with Go Luck Yourself. As a big kudos, go out to Steel Curtain, who has the better week of the three and pushes Pat on out of the throne room taking the overall by only four points if this keeps up playoffs are going to absolutely matter oh yeah we keep going through the playoffs and things get a little more intense as 16 point games stick around we just do the weights and multiples so strategies strategies may change in five weeks so be ready so there we go congratulations to steel curtain for taking over the top spot and i mean we still have a lot of play left people i mean there's not I don't think, let me take a look here. I don't think there's a gap more than uh, 30 points. The biggest gap is between uh, 13th and 12th, or 13th and 11th, I guess you should say, where there's 26 points in between them. So that's our biggest gap. And like I said, that can be made up in one game or one week. So everything still matters. Nobody's like stuck in a rut. Nobody's completely out unless you're counting uh, Big Ben, who really hasn't put any weights on anything. He's staying at a consistent, he or she is staying at a consistent zero. Uh, but having. I still uh, think it's Roethlisberger. <laughs> Roethlisberger is out there. He finally joined. I don't recall inviting him, and I wouldn't have. I'll just put that out there. But regardless, then we have SBP Ronnie, who dropped out a while back, so we, we can't even count him. He ain't even making picks anymore. But uh, there you go. That's the overall. Uh, Evan Bevins, you have any other commentary before we get to your lock and your upset? My only commentary is that I forgot to pick my upset, so I'm, I'm looking at that right now. Let's look at your lock first. Okay. All right. So I, I've got it on Yahoo right now. I'm looking at the weeks and I'm looking at the pick distribution. I, I can see right now, at least those who have made picks, give us your lock for week 14. All right. Well, I'm going out on a limb here. Oh, uh, for a I lock. Uh, no, uh, no, that, 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 was, that was sarcasm. Um, I locked the Chargers <laughs> over the Bengals. Yeah. yeah I, I, I think at this point, whoever's playing the Bengals is going to be a safe uh, lock of the week. Yeah, they are. I'm pretty certain they've remained the worst defense. I don't think anything's changed. Last week, they lost to Denver. Yeah. And the Chargers have quite the explosive offense. Safe bet. I don't blame you there at all. That's a good lock, in my opinion. You need some more time for your upset? or do you No, have- I, I, I'm, I'm going with, with my first instinct. And I, I wouldn't think it would be that big an upset, but there's about an 80-20 split on it right now. I'm uh, I'm going to go with, uh, I, I think the Vikings are going to show a little life against the Seahawks. 
Minnesota. Are they at Seattle? They they are at Seattle. Oh, so uh, that's that, that that's that's never an easy uh, easy thing. I've already said it now, so uh, that's what I'm going with. <laughs> I may even uh, get crazy and put two points on it uh, because, <laughs> as you pointed that out, I'm my confidence is starting to fade. But I uh, just like when I swore up and down that the Red Hulk was Glenn Talbot, even after they revealed it was Thunderbolt Ross, I stuck with it. Uh, <laughs> nice. I know. I know. I've slipped into the wrong podcast metaphor, but uh, <laughs> that's all right. I think every and that that's a welcome thing here on the the PPR podcast. I, I love comics. You love comics. I'll I'll do comic book reference all night long. That sounds good to me. So <laughs> Talbot I, I, though, I who, is, down who with was that ship? Who was uh, Talbot? Glenn Talbot. I uh, was Josh Lucas in the Ang Lee movie. He's the guy that Betty married first. Um, oh, that's and, right. Uh, yeah, I was uh, I was really sure that he was the Red Hulk. Told my wife several times, and uh, each time she uh, made it clear that she still didn't care. Um, <laughs> Listen to me, woman. I don't care, sir. <laughs> All right. Well, Evan Bevins, this has been a treat. Had a good time, man. I'm glad you got to get back on here. I'm glad we got to talk movies and all those, all, you know, comics, movies, video games. I don't think we, we covered much of it. We didn't leave anything else behind in the realm of pop culture, and I'm perfectly fine with that. So Works we got your, me. yeah, we got your lock. We got your upset. I think it's time to get on out of here. Why don't we do some plugs? What what do you got to plug, sir? Well, I, I've got uh, got my uh, web comic support group. In case uh, your origin, uh, it's about a support group for people with uh, lame superpowers. In case your origin doesn't work out the way they show it in the comics. Still writing uh, columns for uh, Graffiti. I'll, I'll, I'll probably have a uh, check out the January issue of Graffiti. It's a statewide entertainment uh, magazine news alternative in, in West Virginia. That's our football issue. So I'll either have my uh, all waiver wire fantasy uh, football team or possibly uh, rail against the absurdity that is college bowl game names. Not that I'm not excited to see Marshall participate in the Bad Boy Mowers Gasparilla Bowl. I did not make any of that up. I saw that post and I almost immediately went to Google. I was like, is he telling the truth or is he is this is he is he pulling my leg here? I can't believe that that's the name of a bowl. Yeah, I mean, if if you're going to just go with the sponsor's name for the bowl, it better be something as awesome as (laughs) TaxSlayer.com. Otherwise, <laughs> tack your name on there, but leave the original name. You know, the FedEx Orange Bowl. Oh, that's great. That One of the craziest great. football games I've ever seen in my life was when uh, Marshall beat East Carolina 64-61 to um, in a multiple overtime game in the GMAC Bowl. I still don't know what GMAC does, but I'm reasonably certain that if I'm in need of their services, I won't base the decision on whether or not they sponsored a bowl game. <laughs> Well, all right. Well, Evan Bevins, like I said, I'm glad you got to get back on here. I mean, we've still got, shoot, I think really before the, well, before the Super Bowl hits, we got four weeks left and then four rounds of playoffs, I believe. Let me look here again. Or three, counting Super Bowl four, right? Yeah. Wild card. And then, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I like I plan on doing this all the way through the end of the season. So, uh, you know, I, I'll definitely try to have you back on here if you're willing to come back on. Oh, sure. All right. Very good. Well, uh, for myself, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you could go check out the Rattlich and Broadcasting Network. All the great podcast content that we have to offer were on Stitcher, iTunes, TuneIn Radio. Spotify. Uh, just type in R A D U L I C H. You can check us out. We are going to be back at you here next week. That's the plan, anyway. I gotta. I'm going to uh, nail down a guest and and hopefully bring back some more content. We'll talk about the rundown and everything. Uh, every, everything that surrounds it. So, with that being said, that's Evan Bevins. I'm Jesse Starcher. We'll talk to you later. See you week for uh, week at the end of week 14. Y'all have a good one. Bye bye. <laughs>